Yeah. So uh, now we'll have here in Casa de Musica, Sonia Sifle, partner at Le Moal Le Moal. And uh, Sonia, after graduating from Paris La Villette School of Architecture in 2008, she began a career in Copenhagen, passing through Rotterdam and then returning to Paris. Alternating her experiences between architecture and landscape agencies, she has acquired multiple methods related to the territory, the uses of inhabited places, but also the world of plants. Following this journey, she founded her own October agency in which she strives to bring together these two competencies, architecture and landscape. After eight years, uh, Sonia joined the office Le Moal Le Moal as a partner. Uh, Le Moal Le Moal, which is an architecture and landscape office based in Paris and Rennes, founded by Christophe and Jess Le Moal in 2010. The multidisciplinary team works on architectural projects such as social, cultural or sports equipment, but also design and interior scenography. The office projects set both on, on sorry, <laughs> set both on urban and rural landscape and take part on the revitalization and preservation of local heritages, merging architecture and landscape. With you, Sonia Sifle. Is working? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, first, I would like to thank Bill uh, and especially Philippa and uh, Tiago for the invitation. Uh, I'm really glad to present the project uh, with you and also the offices, even if uh, Tiago made a little speech uh, before me. So, um, is it working? Yeah. Uh, so, here you can see us, <laughs> Le Moal and Le Moal office. The whole um, office is here. Um, so, as Thiago said, Le Moal Le Moal is an architecture and landscape office based in Paris and Rennes in Brittany, um, founded by Christophe and Jess Le Moal, who are brothers. And uh, as Thiago said, in 2018, I joined the office as a partner. Um, where I allowed me to bring uh, the additional skills of landscape. Uh, so I will show you some. Oh, is it not working? I'm sorry, it's stuck. Yeah. So um, I will show you some projects. So we are working on several projects such as social, cultural, and sport equipment. We are taking care of the landscape on each project, public space, parking, garden, and local vegetation. The office project set both on the urban and rural landscape and take part of the revitalization and preservation of local heritage. Here, you can see on the second uh, picture, uh, the cultural and social center of Cabourg, built with local tiles from Normandy, precisely from 10 kilometers of the building site. Um, I mentioned this project in particular, but many other projects, um, as Pierre Chevet, as I will show you, reflect the approach of the office. Work with surrounding possibilities and design simple architecture with local research, as much as we can. <laughs> so, let's go to, okay. So here you can see Croissy Beaubourg, is a suburban commune of Seine-et-Marne with a strong dominant residential. So as you can see, you can see Paris and this is possible over there. So this is a side project. This, the project is a new multipurpose sports hall located in the center of a set of public facilities. So all around there is gymnasium, school, multipurpose room and a leisure center. Uh, up. So this is the perspective. The project uh, was not won in a competition, but in a particular procedure in France, where the selection of the team is based on a financial offer of fees and a methodological note of organization of the project. So the municipality did not choose an architectural proposal. Um, so the mayor has named us as the winner without seeing any images of the future building. But by the way, neither we are. <laughs> and, okay, 
So we finally started to think about the building only once we knew that we had won the tender. We had to start from the beginning, find the right implementation in the context, analyze all the regulations Oh, sorry. All the regulation of the site to define all the characteristics of the future building, as you can see here. From that moment, our objective, which was guided by the low budget, oriented us towards the simplest design. We have assumed each function of the program in the most efficient way possible, avoiding wasting space and square meters to offer the larger possible room for the sport practice. You can see that on the plan, it's quite simple. The different phases of the project were really short, only three or four weeks. So this rhythm was a driving force to help us to develop the project toward a more refined design where the functions are naturally organized between them. The logic was pursued right up to the choice of materials and the use of hemp blocks. These materials, as we will see later, reflect the desire of simplicity. So I'm not going to explain the plan, which is quite simple, but you can see in the lower part, was forming a U, um, you have all the technicals and services room, like the hall with a really tiny cantilever, um, changing rooms, storage, technicals, rooms, these functions are surrounding the main room, the sports hall, for in priority only ping pong and dance. The practice room is largely open to the north and also to the rest of the environment. We wanted to see the building as a lamp to attract people. Here, I let you see all the technicals information has the budget. Uh, who was 1.1 million euros, included landscape, public space and parking. At the end, the budget of the building is less than 700,000 euros. I extract the amount of, the, um, of a hemp block, all included, which is 139,000 euros for 380 square meters. And it's also important for me to mention all partners who work with us on that project, because without them, I would not be here with you today. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a view uh, of the building site ongoing when we started to um, use the hem block. So in response of a constrained budget, the structural principle of the project was guided by the desire to use sustainable and multi-performing materials to provide maximum space. Pierre? Our engineers proposed me to use Hemblock during a meeting. I never heard about Hemblock before. I had seen operation done based on concrete hemp cast in place, but I was not aware of this type of hemp made product before. He described me all the benefits to use that specific type of materials for our project. Versatility, thermal, acoustic, structural, and fire resistance performances, which means that uh, the hem block especially uh, will maintain their integrity for 30 minutes in the fire. Uh, okay, so this I have some oh, no, okay, there, sorry. <laughs> and also, um, and that was a good point also for us. Growing in France, the fiber are assembled within 500 kilometers of the project site exactly. 441 kilometers. So this is the Etalon, it's a hemp block production site, and this is the road to go through uh, Croissy Beaubourg on the building site. Uh, so hemp blocks participate in valuing short term sector. Up, oh, so, oh. so Pierre Chauvet Sports Hall is the first public equipment built with hemp block, but has a structure. I need to precise it because there are many, many projects built with hemp blocks, but they are used as a second layer inside a wooden structure, has a filling. How project, in our project, the hemp block is structural on its own and separated from the wooden structure. This constructive process has been possible to respond to requirements. On the one hand, it participates in engaging the actor in the building sector toward on an ecological transition. The project provides an opportunity to a masonry company to these techniques. 
And on the other hand, this constructive technique does not require specific certification or qualification. For example, on a small-scale project such as ours, small local businesses were not excluded and could therefore respond to the call for tenders. And actually it's true, because the constructor operator never did that before, had any knowledge and experiences with hemp, and it was a familial local company, not a big major. Similar to traditional cinder block, this product based on Schönwott, as you can see on the first picture, is come from the inner part of the steam, also called straw, which is then cut mechanically to obtain hemp shaving. This <coughs> an agri agricultural material until then without outlet. This base is made very compact thanks to a quick natural cement binder developed by v Vika, a French cement group based in my natal region, Ronel. That means that you never have to go far from your roots sometimes. So uh, this is the images that I use from the Vika group uh, because they are the only one who actually made hem block that could be used as a structure. The other one, you just need to use it to fill it a structure in wood, but so you will understand after why I'm talking about Vika so much. So up oh, the first picture. So these elements are initially designed for a high speed of implementation compared to a technique by projection because they provide delays and drying condition. The structural technique is similar in any point as traditional cement block. You have to create concrete beams and pillars on each angle and for each crossing like lintels and etc. Measuring 60, so as you can see there, uh, measuring 60 by 30 by 30 centimeters. The weight is almost 18 kilos, so even me, I could <laughs> uh, weigh them. They are easily to cut. The blocks are not glue, they are just nested together. This is the main difference uh, from cement block. The really funny fact is that the constructor operator, uh, an old former stone cutter, found the same assembly technique as it got on stereotomy. So actually, everybody can really use uh, these uh, materials. And also, if you have this kind of knowledge uh, with uh, stone, you can use the same. It's com as he said to me, I'm not an expert, but he told me this. So this is, as you can see, the uh, Peters made from concrete at the angle and just the technique of nested together. Okay, so the axonometry reveals the structural principle consisting of semi particles of wooden, as you can see there for the main room, uh, supporting each other on a hand block wall, reinforced concrete post beam frame. So, yeah, the peripheric walls form a U from three meters high and rising up to five meters for the central wall. Uh, I can point it, but I'm sure you can find it. The lower part is attached to the dance hall. The large room open to the outside is the large sport practice room. These half wooden porticles allow us to, feed, to free the maximum of space. Um, it took only 10 days to build all the hemp block walls, which represent approximately, approximately, sorry for my English, 43 cube meters of hemp block in total. Uh, then the carpenter uh, should no. It's not working. Nah. So this is other picture of the building side. This is inside the building. And yes. Uh, so then the carpenter arrived to install the wooden structure already prefabricated in a workshop, and it took them only 15 days. So at the end, it took us longer to brave the control office and finalize the sentences of the plan than building the outlines of the building. Oh, okay, so, and this is the main room. So you can see the wall of hem blocks five meters high and uh, how the wooden structure is uh, using this wall to uh, finish the, the main room. So, okay. 
I have some present. Okay. So um, I made this uh, little collage. Uh, here you can see on the left is the perspective that we made for the building permit. And on the right is the building finished. So we reached to follow the image into reality. The only thing uh, was not the same is the color of the spine in between each panel. It went gold to uh, terracotta. So that's the perspective. And that's the building. <laughs> so because we wanted to offer durability to the facade uh, of the building, we prefer to use full eight fiber cement panels. Um, it's Ekiton panels. Uh, keeping the standard format of the panel uh, has been the starting point to the, to the pattern's layout of the facade. OK. So, but the main problem was how to attach a 10 millimeters thick and heavy cladding pattern of 16.8 kilo per square meters on a hemp wall. Through the project, we were able to discuss with the head of Vika, who had developed the technical requirement for hemp blocks. I must say that this project was a collective work between each partner, us, the design office, the manufacturer, and the company. So Pierrick Ceres from Vika intervened on that question because it was the first time <coughs> that a facade panel was fixed to a wall like this. We had to review the hook system as it was impossible to create intermediate points on the wall. The structure therefore starts from the low part of the ground. So maybe it's better on that to be poor. Maybe I should um, say, uh, yeah, so the structure therefore start from the lower part, as you can see there, oh. um, on the ground, uh, on based on the cellular concrete um, tab, because as you can see on the section, the wall started with this U pieces of concrete and after you have the hem block. So we fixed the first omega there and use a really large one to go on the top to be fixed on the concrete beam um, um, on the highest point of the wall. Um, which, uh, so we came to fix the order on the large omega in the head of the pool filled with concrete, which offer the panels a resistance to pull out and wind. The waterproofing was made by the simple coating applied to the hem blocks prior to panel installation. So I don't know if you can see on the section, but we just have this, uh, this primer put in on it after the omega and after you have the panel and that's it, it was done. Uh, at the end, uh, no, I just want to say first that so this is what we can say about the simplification of using hem block. As you can see there, it's a traditional concrete block session where you have the concrete block, isolation, and after you have the finishing in it. So it's a full of different layers to just have the wall at the end. And for a hem block section, at the end you just need this, if you want, to let it like this. But on how example, we just added this uh, panel facade, but inside we laid it, uh, the hem blocks just with the primer coat. So it helped us to reduce the number of different material used. Due uh, to its multiple qualities, the hem blocks make it possible to not use dumping and to reduce the thickness of the wall to the essential. The inner east surfaces were treated with hem coating in low part. So that was the wall when they just finishing uh, all the inside and when the painter came to do the first primer coat. So you can let it like this or just had a painting on it. Okay, and this is at the end. 
So free of insulation and gypsum board, hem blocks also offer sound absorption properties of the order of 43 dB. That's why in high parts of the dancing room, the blocks are left visible in order to the preserve the acoustic qualities. And at the end is the only thing that we use to treat acoustic in the cell and is working quite well. They already used uh, the, the, the building and they never call me back. So I would say it's a good, <laughs> it's a good return. <laughs> so uh, other picture. Yeah. So we have estimated uh, an additional cost and it's about 30 to 40 percent on the supplied poses price, which out of the total amount of the operation, it represents only two percent on the con construction global cost. So the main challenge was to convince the client that hemp is a good alternative to concrete because since the beginning, the municipality had no specific requirement about the employment of bio-source product. They were not implicated at that time of what, we, what was being pre prescribed and stopped at the word cinder block. So they didn't really realize that we were talking about hem blocks. So we had to explain that this material, material allows sustainable saving in long-term approach it can represent, according to some studies that we made with uh, our uh, engineers, up to 70% of heating saving in the case of a building with high thermal performances. According to the modeling done by our Pierre engineers, primary energy consumption is estimated at 167, I don't know how to say, kilowatt per square meters. So it's a clay C for this building, with a gas consumption reduced to 42.7 kilowatt per square meters. Um, but the thing, as I said, they never ask for any qualification or certification. We do that on our own. So we went not really into these number things and label and uh, we would just want to experiment that um, materials and how it works and how we can um, develop it into our contemporary architecture. So this modest project uh, was commissioned by the city without, as I say, performance requirements. We carried this willpower to use hemp without any obligation. The figures provided today are therefore not the result of a regulatory requirement, but just show how individual decide to go further with the supports to all a partner. So this is the inside the changing room. Oh, no, it's not working. And that's, voila. Thank you. <laughs> Do I have to remove it? Ah, uh, okay. The shelf, it will be easier. Is there any questions from the public? <laughs> Everyone is shy again. <laughs> oh. Michael, please. Please, please. Hi, uh, thank you for the lecture. Um, uh, one thing that I would like to ask is, uh, since hemp is like an organic material, does it need any like special treatment for impermeability or or so so it doesn't rot or something? No. I'm sorry. Can you repeat? Um, I didn't really since understand. Since uh, hemp is uh, an organic material, does it need any special treatment for impermeability or so it doesn't rot or? 
or it's, it's just no the the only thing is that you have to use um specific product natural product uh to um with with hemp because they need to breathe um, but no, I actually, there, there's not so many things to, 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 to adjust. Uh, maybe I would say it's more how we design the building because um, everything was new, so all the details, we have to rethink everything. Because uh, as I show on the section, uh, on the traditional one, you know how to do the finishing, the painting, the tires and the floor, and it's Automatical, I would say, but with hand blocks, we have to reinvent everything because everything was new, and uh, because also we use it in a different way. Uh, this product was um, made by Vika, uh, who is a really big cement industry, and they wanted to uh, get into uh, bio sources material. Uh, but they started to to, to fabric hand block for individual uh, houses. Uh, but it was not used for public um, building. So that's why we worked with the, the manufacturer, because we asked him um, to change sometimes the way how we use it or the details to fix everything I was, I was explaining with the panels. But at the end, the product uh, on its own is not really complicated to use it. You just have to uh, get the waterproofing surfaces with the primer. Uh, you can use it on the inside or the outside of the wall. And at the end, it's working on, on its own, I would say. Okay, uh, so one more thing. Um, but uh, can you use it like in external walls and just be exposed to like the natural, natural things? Uh, of, of the outside? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just need to, to put the first primer coast and a second one to I don't know, uh, have a, a, a nice finish, but uh, in the inside, you can let it like this if you want it. Uh, it's a little bit fragile, so that's why we had this two several coat in it because it's a public building and people are dancing or playing ping pong. So it was just for security, but uh, that's why we let it uh, just like this on the top because the, the quality was there and also the acoustic was better in that way. Um, I would say for, for us, the biggest problem was just a question about um, finishing and how it looks. Uh, the municipality was not so <laughs> into <laughs> because uh, it was a really fresh new building, but the finishing were more natural and, and made, and they were not really into this. This told me that why is not thin and perfect <laughs> and white and and I say yeah but you know this is how we want to use the materials and, and it, I think it's a good way and they say yeah but it's not look finished so at the end it was just a question about aesthetic and not really the 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 the, the materials uh, in itself okay thank you but uh, oh, I think there was a point of the question that I, I also had this doubt is it waterproof on the outside? No, it has to be protected, right, yeah. on the facade, because the water will ruin it, I guess. Yeah, no. that's why you have this first block of uh, cement yeah, so it to go up, rise yeah. it up, yeah. but it's only five meters high. Okay. Uh, five meters. Five, five centimeters, five centimeters, centimeters. <laughs> high. Uh, and you have to use this uh, primer coast uh, okay. to protect the wall. But more you let the hem block uh, breathing, mm -hmm. m better it is for him because he's regulating on his own. Mm -hmm. So he's reacting to the weather all the time. So put no more plastic on it, it will kill the Yeah, it needs to breathe and the water needs to yeah. circulate, yeah. Yeah, from other projects, I think uh, a main aspect it is the, um, the water can't be direct on the wall, otherwise it will uh, ruin the, the material because there are some well-known projects by Herzog and Demiren, the Ricola factory, the warehouse, and it's, it's the same material, kind of, big earth uh, blocks, but without hemp. So it, and, and it's the exterior finish, so it, it can work, but not with direct storms on it because otherwise it will, it will be ruined, I guess. So, more questions? Sarah. Hi, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. And uh, I saw that you uh, kind of discovered this material during uh, this process of designing this building. 
And my question is, what kind of impact it has in other colleagues or even in your work after discovering this material and testing in this building? What I mean is, is there an, any other buildings on the surroundings or in your country that after this building are already using uh, your knowledge about the, that you discover with this material? Uh, actually, we, it, it, it was uh, quite intense, <laughs> I would say. Um, but we use this material again in our project, not, um, not in the same way, but um, now we have a lot of knowledge and we know how to use it until really the building site and uh, the end. Uh, I had a lot of questions from friends who is architect, uh, and I give the contact of uh, Vika and uh, Pierrick because he's helping a lot of uh, offices. Uh, I had a lot of phone calls from and emails from uh, different uh, architects, uh, even like, for example, GDS uh, called me from <laughs> Copenhagen because they were using hand blocks in Brittany uh, and they didn't know really how to uh, do the details, but the more uh, the questions are more about uh, who can build this, the um, companies. So that's why I, uh, I really, I'm really attached to this uh, detail, not detail, but uh, everyone can do it. Uh, they, they don't need to prove a qualifi a qualifi a qualification or certification. Um, this project really showed that uh, just a common companies who's doing masonry can uh, yeah, use you, 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 you show us how easy it is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, more questions in the room? So we have a question is uh, about what we are talking about. Uh, talking about the challenge of using a new, a different material. Uh, what was the issues with the, the engineers, with the calc? What was your problems with the use of a new material? Um, the client. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, I think the, the, the municipality was not really into this um, movement of uh, biosourced. But uh, actually, they realized that something new happened with this building because the French television called them to do something and they started to say, oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> uh, but I would say the client because everything was new for them. Like as I say, the finishing was different, so they were a little bit shocked at the beginning when they get into the building. Yeah. Um, but uh, you have to be pedagogue and uh, explain everything, every phases, and how it's working. Even the company at the beginning, we have to secure them same and say, okay, guys, we're going to to succeed and it's gonna work and uh, it's really a motivation project like you have to really uh, Push it. take <laughs> everyone <laughs> with you and be motivated and uh, uh, yeah. But um, I would say that was uh, the most uh, difficult things. And um, this kind, when you're using a new materials, you really have to prepare yourself. Yeah. Um, the thing is that this project is, uh, as I say, it's a really small project with no ambition. So because of the time was really short, we didn't get enough uh, time to really dive into details. So it was an ongoing process at each uh, phases of the, even during the building site, we were thinking about how we can do these Testing details. The and the yeah. Uh, so, okay, we passed through this first project. I think for the other one, it's gonna be easier and we're going to adapt more the details because I'm not so into some of them in mm -hmm. that building. I didn't show you, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a first step to do something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in a better way. <laughs> yeah, a learning process. So, we have more questions? questions. No. Well, if we don't have more questions, I think we'll do uh, a small coffee break before yeah. the next presentation. It will be around 4:30, so we we can go outside. We don't have a stand-up coffee break because of COVID, but you can use the the coffee at Casa da Musica, and then we'll be back here to the to the room. So, see you soon.